Hi everybody and welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. In this video I'm going to be doing a tutorial of how I stack and process my moon photography. Welcome to my laptop. This is the file of all of my moon photos that I took of the full moon a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you've seen the video of how I captured those images then this is a follow-on to show you how I actually came to the the final image that you saw at the end of that video and if you haven't seen that video I will put a link to that video in the description. So this is a single exposure of the moon and the reason that it looks pink is because I used my Astro modified camera so the red channel is overexposed so we can um, we can very quickly get rid of that in Photoshop so that is not a problem. So this is the quality of image that we are starting with and by the end of this video we will have something that looks more like this. That's roughly where we're hoping to end up by the end of this video um, but this is where we're starting so that's a single exposure. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to open up the program that I just closed. We're going to open up PIP now um, I've got all uh, I've got a full guide on my website um, astroexploring.com um, of this of this whole process. So PIP PIP stands for Planetary Imaging Preprocessor, and it is essentially a way to stack planet images and moon images. Um, Deep Sky Stacker, the clue is in the name, can only do deep sky objects, so uh, we use PIP to stack. Uh, any sort of planetary imaging. So what PIP is going to do is it's going to take our raw moon photos and it is going to convert them to TIFF files and we're also going to select uh, a different size of the image so it's going to crop it down for us so that we're dealing with a smaller image later. So uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can add image files here or if you're already in the folder like I am you can just drag and drop them into straight into pip like that and we can hit OK on that. Okay so now that we've got our images in pip the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click solar lunar full disk and then we are going to go to the processing options tab and this tick box here that says convert color to monochrome, we are going to untick that. Basically, essentially what that is going to do is it's going to leave the RGB channels for us so that when we are in Photoshop later, we're actually dealing with a full color image rather than a black and white image. So it just makes it a bit easier to process. Um, the moon does actually have some really nice colors to it so it is better to work with a full color image than just a black and white. It just gives you a lot more options when you're trying to process your, your image later. So make sure we untick that. The second thing that we are going to do on this page is we're going to go over here and ensure that the cropping box is ticked and I've got mine set to 1200 by 1200. You could set it to, to whatever you like. Um, I shot this image with my uh, Skywatcher 72 ED um, that has a focal length of 420 mil, so um, cropping it 1200 by 1200 works uh, really well for me. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go over to the quality options tab and we're going to tick only keep the best quality frames. So what, um, what PIP will do when it's doing its processing is it will actually give each image a score as it processes it and it will dump all of those images into a subfolder and it will have in the file name it will have a percentage against each image and it will it will it will rank them so the first image that's in that folder will be your best image and then it will um, gradually the quality of the images will get worse as it goes down to the bottom so you're looking at some anything sort of over anything over 85 percent i would say i would say it's absolutely fine but if you've got a whole load of images that are all in the 90s then that that's fantastic the way, the way that I choose to do this, there's one of two ways. You can choose to select, so I've got 293 frames. You could select to keep the best, say, 250, and, and that will obviously get rid of 43 images. The way that I do it is that I actually keep all the images, and when we go into our stacking software, Auto Stacker, later, 
I will um, actually only choose to stack the best sort of 90 or 95 percent of these images so you can you can choose whether or not you want to process them all or not um, I always do so I'm just going to leave that at 1200 and, um, and keep that unticked. Output options, you want to ensure that you are outputting as TIFF files and you want to ensure that the create subdirectory is ticked. Um, and you can give this whatever name you like, I just leave it as the, um, as the standard uh, pip. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to go on do processing and we are then going to start processing and there's 293 frames this will take maybe five minutes to run it doesn't take um, it doesn't take very long at all so I'll pause the video here and we'll um, we'll join back up once this has finished okay so pip has finished processing all of the images now so if I open output folder so what's that what that's done as is it's created a subfolder within the original folder of all our raw files which are here so here's your subfolder from pip and here is all of the images and you can see that it has ranked them in terms of quality so each file name has a percentage at the end of it so i get down to 84.3 so that's not too bad so what we are now going to do is we are going to take all of these tiff files that have been processed and cropped and we are going to put them into auto stacker and again there's two ways to do this you can click on open here and browse to your folder or you can just control a and drag them over okay so this is one of the TIFF files that it's dragged in and it opens this in a, in a second window within AutoStacker. We don't need to really do anything in here. What this software is going to do is it is purely going to stack our moon images and it does that really quickly. It only takes a minute or so. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to come over to this window where our, where our photo is and we need to click on place AP grid. And what that is gonna do is it's gonna create loads of little squares and reference points on the moon and it's going to use those reference points to stack each image and align them so that you end up with a really uh, clean, crisp image and not one with a moon sort of going all over the place. Um, so the smaller the grid, the more CPU intensive this process is going to be and the longer it's going to take. If you don't have enough of these squares, then you'll um, end up with a, a lower quality stack, essentially. So what i have found is that about 100 seems to be okay i can i've got a fairly decent laptop so i can i can go lower and i, and I will go lower on this um but about about 100 seems fine if your if your squares look about the same sort of size as this then that will be absolutely fine but i'm just going to take mine down to about 80 hit place ap grid again and you can see that that they are now smaller and from there the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original window where we dropped the image files into and we're going to move over here to the right hand side now frame percentage to stack i'm fairly happy with all of the images that i've taken so i'm going to stack the, the top 95 percent now if we go back to what we did in pip if you only process the best uh, quality images then it might be that when you come over to this software you might just want to stack every single one of those images because you've already filtered out the ones that aren't quite as good a quality all to ensure that you really do only have the best images you could still choose to stack say 90 95 percent of them um, but for the purposes of this tutorial we're going to choose 95 percent and then we just click on stack that is going to run its process and it's only going to take about a minute so we'll catch back up again once this is finished so that has finished stacking the images now and that only it did only take about a minute to um, to complete that now what this does is it outputs one single stacked image much like deep deep sky stacker would for your deep sky astrophotography and it puts that into a new folder within your pip subfolder so in here is our stacked image okay so all we are going to do now is we're going to take that stacked image and we're going to drag that into Photoshop so I use Photoshop for all of my image processing you don't need to use Photoshop 
um, you do have to pay for that. Um, so you could use any any freeware like GIMP. Um, it will work equally well. I'm just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using Photoshop, and it doesn't really matter what software you're using because they'll all essentially do the sort of the same thing. Um, it's just the the layout and and the look and feel of it will be will be different. Okay, so we've got our image into into Photoshop. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the levels and you will see that that then gets rid of the um, the red effect on the moon. So I'm going to do that by adjusting each channel step by step and you'll see that the moon is going to go funky colors. So for those not familiar with Photoshop, so all of this black here is your data on, the, on each channel. So this is the red channel. So all of this black data here is the data and the rest of this, there is no data here at all. So I'm not actually losing any data by, uh, by moving these sliders. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move these sliders up to where the data starts. And you'll see once I've done the blue level that this will go to a normal color. There we go. That looks a bit more like the moon now, doesn't it? Now, I do want to point out that I'm not a Photoshop expert. This is just how I produced my final image that you saw in my previous video. There are uh, loads of people out there who are experts on Photoshop. So um, this is just how I produce my final image. And to be honest, um, image processing is all um, down to your personal preferences anyway. So I'm going to process this how I like to see my final image which might be completely different to how you like to see your final image and that's okay it doesn't it doesn't matter how you know it's your image so however you want it to look is how you want it to look so after we've done the levels I, the next thing i'm going to do is a curves adjustment and what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold down control and i'm going to click on a dark part of the moon and still holding control i'm going to click on a lighter part of the moon and you can see that that's plotted two places on the on the graph. So the left hand side is your black point and the white hand side is your right point. So I want to make the dark parts darker just for a higher uh, contrast. So I'm going to take that and move that down. And as I move it down you can see that the contrast go down and I might be slightly too aggressive at the minute. And then I can move the light points up to there. Now I think that will that's probably a bit too much but we'll we can we can always change it change it again later. Once we've done that, um, we can change uh, the brightness and contrast. I like to take the brightness down to about minus ten, just to make that a little bit darker because a full moon is so bright. And the contrast to down to about minus fifteen. You can see that was only a subtle difference, but it it has made quite quite a difference. And the next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to go to filter sharpen unsharp mask now did you see the difference that that made already as soon as i as soon as i did that so if i cancel that you can see it changed back to a slightly more blurry picture if you like so filter sharpen unsharp mask you can see the difference that, that has made so the default for, for uh, photoshop seems to be about 200 percent um, now you can whack that up all the way to 500 percent if you like um, which is what I did for my previous image. So that's what I'm going to do again. I like how that looks. You may look at that and think that looks horrific, but I like how that looks and that's that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK there. I'm then going to go to Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. And you can see, again, it gives you some, some uh, defaults. So if I take that back down to where it was, I quite like it, maybe at about 10. Um, let's, let's bring some highlights up slightly, maybe to 5 and see how that looks. Yeah, so I quite like that. And you can play around with this for hours. I mean, that, this has only taken 5 minutes. You can, you can play around with this for hours, which on a, on a rainy Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which we seem to have this week. Um, this is great. And again, I'm just going to do another curves adjustment just to see if that looks makes it look any better or any worse. 
these only need to be slight adjustments. That's way too much. I don't like that. But you can see if I drag that all the way down, you can see how how much of a difference that makes. Um, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that there. So that was a really basic, and I've I think I've taken that too far to be honest. But that is a really basic tutorial of how I got to my final image from before. And apart from the colour being slightly different, I think that's a pretty similar image to how we, we got there before. So you can follow that process on my website, as I've said, that's astroexploring.com. There are all sorts of other things that you can do with this image, but I just wanted to do a very basic tutorial. The other things that you can do is to get a, to get a true colour moon image. What you'll, what you'll need to do is you'll need to adjust your hue and saturation by creating um, quite a lot of layers underneath this and making small adjustments at a time and then flatten all those layers down into one layer and adjusting that back onto the top of this image as a luminance layer. Um, that's probably way too advanced for this. This is just a really simple tutorial. I might do another video on how to do that. So leave a comment below if you'd like to see me do a video of how to do a, a colour moon tutorial because believe it or not the moon does have some really beautiful colours that I have not done justice in this image at all. And with that if you like this video give it a thumbs up, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so that you never miss another, another upload. My name's Nick and this has been Astro Exploring. Thanks for watching.